so here we go. Uh, so uh, let's talk about it. Raspberry Pi, threes, Arduinos, and, and other things. And so, let's see if I can make the slides. So which ones is what? Here we go. Uh, so uh, let's start off with um, uh, microcontrollers. So microcontrollers, like Arduino, uh, have no operating system. Uh, usually run on a single core. I'm not in megahertz speeds. Uh, they handle multi-processing by interrupts. So they have interrupts built into their hardware, so they can they can do interrupts. They're resilient. Um, uh, I have tortured these uh, these things. I have shocked these things. I have showed it these things. I have never smoked anything like that. <laughs> I have had no blue smoke come out of any of these. You don't have enough of all these problems. I have Trust me, I've done dumb things. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got about, I usually don't have more than 12 volts on my bench. So, it's, so. all right, so uh, these use uh, anywhere around three or five volts, uh, are usually around an amp, though there are some that go much lower than amps. It could be a quarter of a milliamp. So, again, you can power them right off of these light bulbs. And if you have uh, a boost circuit, get them up to five volts because you can. Uh, Five volts or uh, 3.3 volts. Uh, uh, they usually have, uh, they're usually basic, uh, um, I should say, they really don't, if any internet connection, it'll be extremely basic. They do not have uh, uh, strong uh, conductivity uh, through Wi Fi and things like that on microcontrollers. Usually they're uh, plug in devices. So, usually talking serial. I, 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 and then, uh, uh, and they uh, usually have the global, uh, in my, uh, 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 my first original code on, uh, on Arduinos, I found I was using stuff from, uh, 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 Hong Kong and from, uh, Serbia. And so it's pretty uh, stuff. There are huge, and there's also huge versions of this. Uh, there's an Arduino Mega, which is about this long, uses about four, and uh, can run uh, four different serial ports and all sorts of all sorts of conductivity on them. So you can get. Generally, these are for motor control, server control, weather stations, and I've got examples: micro bits, uh, M zero based controllers. Um, uh, the Ada Feather, which we showed. Oh, a Tinsy. We have a Tinsy. Uh, is a Tinsy. Uh, so a Tinsy. Okay. And these these two things are actually Arduinos. So there it is. This is this is the Tinsy. So this. Uh, uh, is a, you know, and this is a, uh, which is also, as we know. What do you call it again? Gamma. Oh, gamma. That is the Lodos, right? That's the gamma is used for a wearables. Uh, the TC can be used for wearables. Right? So that's oh. microcontrollers. So let's move on to our next adventure. Um, Internet of Things devices, all right? Let me see this that would be like the thing that I was playing with earlier, all right? Oh, that is the thing. This, this is, is the thing. thing. This is just uh, uh, microphone. Oh, uh, but this one is smaller than yeah. that one. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. I think that's but the gamma. That's the thing. Yep. That is still an Arduino. So I'm doing no. Yeah. So IoT devices. And so let's just keep going. I have no operating system of any sort. That's the same as that. Yeah. They usually a core and specialized hardware. They often cannot handle uh, multi-processing. Uh, the, uh, the thing as a new line uh, will often, uh, so this thing here as in addition to the Arduino programming language called yield, where you return the control back to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the machine so it doesn't crash. So they, they usually have to have, um, they can't continuously loop because they have no, inter they have no uh, interrupts. So if you loop a uh, program inside of an Internet of Things device, it will go asleep and never come back. And so you have to be very thoughtful about that. Uh, they're usually 3.3 uh, volts, uh, less than a quarter of an amp. Uh, often you can program them. So for instance, thing here can be programmed with uh, an uh, Arduino IDE. Uh, 
it can also be uh, coded directly. Uh, and this thing, for instance, has uh, internet access program that this particular thing is generating a. Uh, this here is a uh, another uh, internet thing that I didn't build. Uh, this one has uh, a Bluetooth in it, low voltage. Uh, Low voltage and um, uh, and a full Wi-Fi connection you can actually connect to a Wi-Fi network, and so you could actually use it to download your, uh, your something on your network. So this is a uh, a little uh, more advanced version, and that's called an ESP32, and it uses a special set of chips that were made just for doing that. This chipset would probably be what if you had an electronic toaster. This would probably be the tool, the chip set. They put in there. So this is a breakout board, so you can play with those chips. Oh. So, and that's from uh, Denver again. Um, <coughs> so often you get uh, incomplete hardware. And one interesting thing is these two particular uh, pieces of hardware that we have the IoT uh, automatically recharge your lipo battery if you plug one in it when you have a US. They go to recharge. Uh, uh, stuff in there. And it's very important to have that because overcharging a lipo battery is usually followed by an explosion. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what's this for? That's for the lipo battery. Oh, that is a battery. Yeah. So that yes. is a, this is a, a USB. Yes, a USB two or three. USB, I don't remember. Um, it, it's a low voltage version. Uh, uh, so anyways, going back to, uh, there are some microcontroller, uh, microprocessors or microsystems, if you like, like the Raspberry Pi Zero that overlap this year. There is a, another version of the Raspberry Pi. I didn't bring it because I think it's a stupid piece of hardware. It's uh, about a third the size of this, has one core, and can run Linux, a light version. Okay. Who cares? But Raspberry? Yeah, 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 light version of Raspberry, but it can't do a desktop. And so it's only, you can only use it for a lightweight controller. And so my personal opinion is you should just go to these if you're in that space or to these, not to go to a light version of these, because these are aggregates. And, and so that takes us to. Um, but please, I have next. A, 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 mm -hmm. You can program it on those, right? So yes. it has the input. Yeah, and these actually all program it's a version of C for. Uh, for oh, C uh, input. For uh, and now, but uh, oh, but we have uh, uh, but the uh, feather over there has actually programs in Python also, and this one programs in a special uh, has a whole IDE special for it, uh, so you you can choose not to program it in uh, C. You can program it in another language that uh, uses takes advantage of all of its moving parts. That, that requires you to do make and things like that. And I was, uh, I'm interested in learning yet another ID. <laughs> uh, so oh, yeah. let's move on to the uh, microcontrollers, which uh, uh, is our Raspberry Pis. Uh, uh, they can run Azure. Uh, usually it's a light version of Azure. There's a special, Microsoft makes a special Azure just for my, uh, Raspberry oh, Pis. And uh, Windows 10. Uh, runs on them, and but it's a special version that, that uh, actually um, um, is uh, very narrow. And you, what you do is you effectively write it on a Windows system, compile the environment, and then load it on them. So it's uh, more for uh, more for like handheld devices and things of that sort, oh. not for uh, not for doing your taxes on. Them. Okay. And so, <laughs> uh, and so. Um, uh, there are also uh, some of the really strange ones. We have Linux, Arduino, uh, I misspelled Arduino that time. Um, uh, I've been trying to find how many times I misspelled Arduino. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, there's the first one. Uh, so Arduino, so we have, uh, you can get hybrid boards from SparkFun uh, and all over the internet that are half uh, Linux machines or half Arduinos, or they can switch back and forth while they're black. And so uh, even the uh, the feather over there can run both. And so 
so they uh, so these are uh, a fine now what happens with these however is uh, you start moving into uh, you know gigahertz processors so the previous machines were all megahertz so 100 megahertz 8 megahertz I mean they're really slow uh, Raspberry Pis are two gigahertz core this is a this is a co four core processor uh, uh, three gigahertz faster than uh, uh, computers of uh, many years ago so this yeah. is uh, uh, this is actually a pretty pretty good standby machine actually for that. Uh, but because of that, you go up in temperature and and, uh, and um, power. So uh, you're not going to run a Raspberry Pi from one of these. <laughs> you're going to run it from one of these. A wall socket. <laughs> it is really hard oh. to run a Raspberry Pi from uh, from uh, from uh, a robot. It's mm -hmm. all great stuff. What is it doing? Yeah, you may pass the red brick by and pass it around. All right. Um, the other uh, things are that uh, they run Linux and use your special, but I will remind you that Linux has to have the drivers compiled into the core. So that yeah. means that unlike Windows, if you're running Azure and you get some new hardware or something, uh, it's likely Azure can get a driver for that, or you can make one. Uh, for Linux, if it isn't compiled into the core, you need to build a whole new core and a whole new distribution. That is, I, I'm, I'm currently of the opinion that I'm going to try to die before I ever <laughs> compile in Linux core again. <laughs> I've done it once, and I am not That's done it. Maybe they get it better. <laughs> <laughs> Always tell me now, it's going to get the obscure error messages, and you're now on the internet to find out there's 15 other people in 12 different countries that have this. And, uh, and no one has an answer. Uh, so, uh, so now the next thing is uh, uh, even though you're passing the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi around, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, and many of the microprocessors, uh, you can really want to only talk to them by USB. You don't really, there's, there are GPI plugs on those. You can plug directly into that thing. But the challenge is, and this is true of most of these uh, microcomputers, which is even your laptop, um, you start connecting wires in there, it's 1.8 volts with almost no amps on it is the max. Mm -hmm. you, put two volts, you put two volts in there, uh, and you have a former Raspberry Pi. So you have, it, is, it is absolutely unsafe uh, to, um, uh, play around in there with jumpers. Sir. What is the voltage then? What, if it's not two volts, what is it? 1.8 is what's allowed. That you is get picky. Up, yeah. That is picky. You get up to, yeah, so you run 3.3 uh, volts through one of those pins. And by the way, there's 3.3 volt uh, voltage available on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So there's an actual pin for that because they want to be able to help you by uh, giving you the voltage for that. And so you can use that to light up like a nice little uh, diode or something, uh -huh. but if you um, run that backwards into that port by accident, it's a former uh, Raspberry Pi, and this is true of almost all of this uh, technology of micro computers that um, you, need to, you need to really protect the microcomputer. Uh, they don't like uh, uh, bad power. Uh, these are really, these, these will run, I've run one of the the motor running a negative two volts into it, and it still ran. So but these are these are really, these picking. Arduinos are really interesting. Uh, They're machines. robust or resilient. Uh, yeah. Resilient, or I just I just been lucky. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> I, I get to the you, you have the quantum. Oh no no, no that's it's uh, I'll uh, we'll discuss it later. But yeah, yeah. Uh, running motors yeah. on uh, Arduinos creates a negative voltage. Huh. Yeah, so, and, uh, but we'll come back to that. Uh, so. Uh, so uh, these Raspberry Pis, uh, Bitcoin mining, uh, robot use to some degree. My intent of using them will be to actually have the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi talking to the Arduino, let the Arduino run all the motors and everything, and then let the Raspberry Top Pi manage the uh, communication back to me and uh, all of the nice USB devices that I can have on the video cameras and things like that. So my, my general uh, approach to robots is to uh, use uh, multiple hardware. And, uh, and that also allows you to take some of the voltage way down. 
So what you only need is enough voltage to run a large with pi, and that's a stack of uh, LiPo batteries. And then uh, if you want to just run the uh, Arduinos, you just need uh, uh, amps. So generally, you need about four amps to run a robot uh, in that situation. If you're using little tiny motors, if you're trying to build a robot that's going to go through a wall, that's a different thing. So moving on to the next one. So uses for microcontrollers, hardware connected that talks serial, I2C, and SPI. Those are the, uh, the best ones. Multiple devices can be used together. So I have, so we, you can, uh, and I've done it before. I, you can have a couple servos, a couple motors, you know, have it talking to you remotely, uh, take the temperature, go follow a line, you know, all that kind of stuff is all possible on microprocessors. So you can find Arduino and uh, a couple of the other ones uh, out there doing all that stuff. So that they work really well for that. Uh, generally, they're five volts or three volts. Now, the interesting point is almost all of the sensors are now 3.3 volts. And almost all of the old Arduinos, like all the ones that I have, are five volts. So you have to keep switching the voltage back and forth. So, we, uh, so uh, uh, Spark Fun and a Lady Ada in Ada Fruit in New York City. Produce little little tiny little tiny boards that will shift the voltage back and forth. Yes, sir. So I'm all new to this. So the yeah. Raspberry Pi, um, and you said is USB. You power it by USB. Do you actually power? Yes, you can power it by USB, or you can power it directly by other means. But yeah. Yeah. So like, if you have all these different voltage sources, I mean, we used to use a power supply and adjust it. Yeah. You know, is what are so, what are you doing when you say you're so using what, a couple? So of what I suggest time? is that uh, Raspberry Pis talk to the Arduino by USB. Okay. And then the, the Arduino can talk to anything at different voltages. You can shift up, shift down. And you can even get uh, Arduinos that run to three volts. And if you go to Hong Kong, I'm sorry, I got Hong Kong, Hong Kong, yes, Hong Kong, yeah. Uh, that, uh, there's, uh, there's an Arduino that has a switch on it. Nice. That's what I like. I have a stack of those. Yes, yes, a label, and all I have to do is yeah, this. Because so that power so supply I thinks I have to. I want to talk to all of these. I want to talk to all of these devices. I yeah. can just do three, three. Because I, I've actually had a rat's nest of uh, uh, Arduinos talking to three point three devices <laughs> through all of the converters. So I've actually had a clock that's three point three. And then I have a display that's five volts, beautiful LED display. I do love that. Yeah. I love this big around. What do you make right off of the right off, and that and that was my clock that I. Built. What do you? Oh, you so you built something to measure this? The... No, actually, I, I I didn't bring one today, but I, I you can buy a little uh, little tiny clock. Okay. That's three point three volts again. Okay. You hook it up and. Then, and now you've got so one. not a multi. You don't have a multimeter sitting there. No. That, I know that's too much for yeah, what you need. No. Right? Back to a a a good. Uh, chip costs about nine bucks. Is that the five fifty five or what is it? Uh, no, it's uh, it's actually uh, uh, it's a whole set of it's actually a little microprocessor. Okay. There. Okay. It has to be able to uh, for a good clock. You have to use a crystal, and the problem nice. is the crystal speed changes based on the temperature. So mm -hmm. it must measure the temperature while it's getting the vibration, and then adjust the clock up and down by the uh, temperature of the room. Yeah. <laughs> so that's quite a so uh, you can use micro back to microcontrollers. Uh, cosplay is actually where it's here on yes. uh, some of this in there and wearables and uh, we did the GPS. Uh, we got a GPS example there. IOTs uh, best for just measuring things. Uh, don't uh, uh, but they can connect directly to the internet uh, like uh, like our our, our uh, ESP32 here uh, and that and that can log directly. So if you want to if you want to uh, measure what temperature it is and what in your garden. Or you want to know if your toaster is hot enough. Yeah. This is the you know, this is your this is your tool. And then the microcomputer really is multitasking. Microcomputer, the Raspberry Pi, should be your laptop. That's my yeah, computer. everything. You're, that's really about multitasking and complex control of resources. So those are so uh, so if you want uh, if so an example would be. Um, if you want to, to build a robot and you want to be able to monitor it, it you can use the microcontroller to control the uh, all of the uh, uh, 
uh, robot parts, but then plug a Raspberry Pi into it to let you connect to it uh, and monitor all the pieces because that can do that all multi processing. And you could actually have it um, give commands to the robots through you. So that would be, uh, so that's my recommendation on those things. And so, yes, sir. Okay, so USBs. And then this guy? That is a that, 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 is, that is an older Raspberry Pi, so that is the Ethernet. Cool, I thought that's okay. And then this yeah. is a microphone or I mean a, a headphone? Uh, that is microphone. Yeah, there's a uh, that is a uh, speaker. Oh speaker, okay. And then that that's is your, that is uh, HDMI. Yeah. Yeah, HDMI. Oh yeah. cool. Okay. And so, then there's also a place for a camera on that. Whoa, okay. So, so then the other thing is on USB. So if you want to power it with USB, what would be my thing over here? Is it my my computer? That, what am I feeding uh, when I feed? Actually, you would have to plug it. You plug it into the little USB plug. Okay. There's a little USB plug on the side. Mini USB. Yeah, right there. Whoa. Okay. I see it too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I you can see it. Oh. Okay. Those are out. Oh, that's a micro. Is that micro or mini? Oh, that's oh, that that was, this yeah. Okay. So I'm hooking this up to a computer. Yeah. Or any power source too. Like a phone? Uh, no. No. It wouldn't, it wouldn't phone okay. don't go out. Too. Okay. So. All right. Let's do demos. Yeah, so demos. Okay, let's do some demos. All right. Ooh, this is so confused. They are kind of similar. Why don't you give them a new name? <laughs> I say this thing so confused. They all get, you know, iOS. Well, they're the same things. The, they're the same thing. Oh, they're just the same. Oh, they're not the same. They're, they're not the same. You can't use them for the same thing. So, so for our demo, <laughs> you bring out the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So here is the Raspberry Pi. We'll let it do oh, this. Oh, he has another. I like that one. So, the screen. Yeah. That's a bigger Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so we have our little Raspberry Pi here. And uh, can, so can you use this one to use that? Or they're not the same? That is the same. Exactly. How they're the same? Oh. Exactly the same. So let's see what keyboard's on. And oh, you're doing real things. Yeah, it's booting Linux right now. Yeah. It's very exciting. It's got yeah. raspberries on it, and uh, we're going to bring this right up here. So it's coming up. I'm going to try to. Uh, Michael, what's, the, what's the intro year of Raspberry? Huh? When did they introduce Raspberry? Oh, uh, five, six, six yeah, years ago. Sounds like yeah. I don't So we have now oh, a you screen. Have a screen. We have a screen. So now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little tiny keyboard here and. Um, uh, connect to my uh, Wi-Fi, and we're going to uh, connect right here, and we need a password, which is oh, you, have, you have a password for protection. Are you super user? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My keyboard is uh, there. It is. My keyboard is not on my keyboard. So, so this one has files for boot, and when you boot it up. Yes. Oh. It looks like, it looks like we're having trouble with the uh, Raspberry Pi connecting in the room. Hmm. We will do the obvious thing. Uh, uh, so I was yeah. Restart it. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see if I. Yeah, maybe you need to keep the file. Keyboard is not being happy right now. So we did the blue type last time. Here we go. Yeah, like, uh, there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see if the demo holds together. If not, uh, we'll do it from my phone. So you have put a code, it looks like? No, it's it's like the the Linux booty. Oh, okay. Uh, there it is. There we go. Let's see. Do we have our, are we alive now? Okay. There we yeah, go. Yeah, that's very yeah, it's not much people. Yeah. Okay. That was working. Yeah. So is that the USB or the Wi-Fi talk feature or your, uh, the Bluetooth? This is uh, Wi-Fi. One is our password. Okay. And so we are now uh, talking to our, our thing now. The thing is talking to us. Oh, do I know? So now, so now what we will do is we will go to the internet. Oops, not the files. And connect to the internet. Yeah. This is actually projecting. And what's the thing? Uh, That's that smartphone. one. Smartphone. Smartphone. Okay. Okay. And then we have to know the. Uh, we need to connect to it. So we need uh, to know. We're going to actually. Have, 
So, so it is now with the this machine has now replied back that you have done it wrong. <laughs> and so we will now do what it says, which is that's wrong IP address. No, no, I have the right I, I, oh, no. oh. So uh, watch my LED. If you can actually can you hold this up like that for me so we, our friends can see it. So we're going to turn the LED off now. All right. Oh, it is HTTP. LED, and what did it say? LED. And we're going to do slash. Oh, sure. I did say it. It's just you. Yeah. Or does it go on? Yeah. Or does it go on, isn't it? I don't remember. We'll try to turn it off. We'll try it. We will. See, it should work. No, up, but you know, it's, it's like all demos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> See, the green one on went on. Okay. So if you notice, the green, uh, I forgot to turn it on before we started. <laughs> <laughs> so I can now, using my, and you can see from my screen that I have actually to command this. So you guys, if you went to your phones, could actually start turning on and off the LED all you want. And so this is the Internet of Things device. I notice it's not plugged into anything but a LiPo battery. And this is the, uh, the device that you need for four or five bucks to program this particular crappy piece of hardware. But, uh, but it does, and you can see we have our green diode on. So that's our first demo. Uh, and we use the Raspberry Pi to connect to it. Reason for the Raspberry Pi is if I used the L uh, Apple computer, I would have disconnected the uh, it's meeting because <laughs> I want to change yeah. networks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this particular one over here, this cooler one here, would allow us to actually uh, have it connect to the um, uh, to the uh, to the regular Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's yeah. the point to pick yeah. up. And so, so that is our first demo. So, are we impressed? Yep. Yeah. We will now get to our second demo. Yes, great. We go on. That was first success. Yeah, we did not crash. So the first thing we have to do is find the right cable. All right, so here we have, this is an Arduino. So this was a user for the program. Yes, it's just it's just a uh, uh, translator for the hardware. It's an old school, old school uh, translator. So what's the, what the problem for the SOE? This one pretty much is stand on its own. It is, yes, that's what it's doing right now, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's standing on its own right now. Um, so, but the guy wants to can talk to it. Yeah, let's talk to it right now. So talk to it. Yeah. Okay. So now we will move to oh. our Arduino. Uh, all right. So this is an Arduino. We will not yeah, get right. anywhere. Anywhere can be. Okay. So we oh, have powered up our Arduino. You can see we now have a green light, and we have this strange thing here, which is actually a US uh, G, uh, GPS, and we will. Sure it's yes. actually in properly. And um, the wires that are on the board here uh, that you can see uh, actually are powered to the GPS device. And then these are these are actually serial uh, transmit and receive, reversed so that one is transmit and uh -huh. receive. So uh -huh. this is a basic serial connection. Remember what I said about the Dwinos is strong on serial, strong on direct connection. Uh, can do interrupts, and that's what's actually happening here. This is actually currently talking to us. I'm going to uh, uh, step out of here for a moment, <coughs> off once, and uh, try to uh, bring up another display. And it's not up there, so we need to share some more. How do I do that? Okay. Oh, All right. No, I, I only shared an app, so. Oh, can you share that? Huh? Try new share. Oh, uh, new share. Okay. And there we go. All right. And we'll share the desktop at this point. Okay. There's my desktop. All right. So, uh, welcome to the Arduino software now. 
And uh, this is uh, a routine called blink. We're not actually going to do that. We're actually just going to uh, first change our boards to. Uh, uh, we're going to go to the going to change our boards away from the feather. That's unusual. And, and then uh, we want to have a Duino. Um, uh, do we know we want the genuine uh, Uno? Yes, there we are. Thank you. And uh, uh, so we should now be able to talk to the board. And let's see if we can. Uh, we'll talk to the serial monitor. And let's see. Which one? Uh, and, um, and we are, it is now talking to uh, the highly confused GPS. That is having trouble finding us location because we're in a brick building right now. But it is actually talking to the GPS, and we will uh, reboot this and see if that will be able to accomplish. Reboot it seems like the best. <laughs> well, this uh, well particularly during demos. But, uh, <laughs> so, so you can see that um, we're having trouble locking to a satellite right now, uh, but we are actually uh, have the date and time, so it's actually. Uh, Connected to uh, something, and it's pulling up uh, the date right the now. Time in the yeah, and so we will see if we uh, have all of our wires plugged in. Let's see. Uh, You're looking for coordinates, or it just needs to be able to uh, read the. Uh, I have to get the satellites, so it's trying to reach the satellites right now. Uh, how many this satellites turn off the Raspberry Pi. It needs a couple. I believe it needs three. Okay. So, so uh, because it needs to find the right. three. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so, the, so the point is, so we'll uh, try again. Yeah, so this demo isn't doing as well as it did uh, yesterday, <laughs> as yeah. it is having trouble finding. It. So what we'll do is we'll talk about it. Uh, and we'll let it run for a while and see if it uh, uh, can find a satellite uh, anytime soon. But there's a no controller, no, no microcontroller, anything there, right? No, there's a microcontroller in there. This actually, this as we know, is in that box. So this is a this is a uh, cool presentation. They instead of what I normally end up doing is I get one of these and I have to have a breadboard and all these wires here. And by the time I bring it here, then half the wires are pulled out. You watch me. Uh, so oh, I, yeah. like, I like this particular one because when I'm doing demos or things, I can just plug oh, into yeah. it without, and, and all the wires generally stay in. But yes, it is having trouble connecting. It window. connects really well to the wall. Is the window going to help us? Uh, we'll just let's see if we can find anything. Otherwise, Otherwise, we should uh, move it over close yeah. to the glass. But yeah. This is a brick building, and this exactly. building is designed to survive a disaster, so it's got metal in it. And so it uh, probably oh, is I currently see. blocking my, uh, mm -hmm. uh, my GPS yeah. at the moment. But, that's, but you did see that it is talking yes. to a serial device and all that. If we took it outside, you find it. Right. Let's get to the. So you have the board hiding mm -hmm. under there? Inside there. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Now, we have. More demo. Okay. All right. So we'll return to uh, our next demo. Uh, we did the Raspberry Pi, so we will actually go back and do it again because we just saw that. But I will tell you that um, uh, so for some hands on items on the Raspberry Pi, uh, you need to load the operating system on an SD card. So here's a uh, one that I have purchased that's already preloaded. SD card. Yes. Yeah, so that's that, Raspberry. Yeah, that's, that's a copy of uh, Raspberry uh, that you can buy. And so that SD card slides into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you look and turn it over, there's a little tiny spot right there. And you slide that in there. And I will tell you the most important thing is before you put your Raspberry Pi into a nice container, that you pull that card out. Because when you push it through, the card will shatter. I, I only know this for reasons that are unhappy. <laughs> And, and by the way, USB cards that are large cost about 40 bucks, and so that costs more than the Raspberry Pi. And other details of the Raspberry Pi is it has this fine uh, GP uh, set here. 
They have hats that you plug on top of this. So you have, one of them I have has an SSD controller, uh, a solid state. Right. And so I, ha I have and I have a Raspberry Pi and it puts a 20 gig hard drive on it, plus a real-time clock. These do not have clocks on them. Okay. It, it has to talk to the internet to know what time it is. If, if, if you, you can buy hats that have clocks on them. Running Linux on a <coughs> clock is really bad. Because Linux doesn't know what day it is. Anymore. So when it starts updating its files and stuff, you're getting 1990 for the dates on the files. So you have, this is the easy answer, you have crap. If you want to, you want to get into Raspberry Pi, what, what would be your entry point if you don't like? Because you're bringing up a lot of points that, but to, you, know, you know, I mean, like if you're really a novice, where what's your entry Well, the good news is, so the Raspberry Pi, the new ones, the C's, which cost the same as the B's, are actually fast enough to use it right away. And what, does these it B's are so slow. That, does it come in a kit so that you... You can buy kits okay. for them. So like, you, for instance, this overpriced kit here, uh, with the $40 screen and the $30 plastic parts. I will tell you that I thought it was $30 for all of it. And then I got a bunch of these plastic ones and I realized I had to go buy the $40 screen yes. to go with it. So yes. it's a $70 container over a $29 computer that you mm -hmm. might be able to get for 20 bucks if you were to look. So I went to the PCI? That's the GPIs, yes. GPI. GPIs, yes, that's what they're GPI. called. GPI plugs. And, and you'll notice that um, and you'll notice it's really hard to know what those are, and so people have ribbon cables that come off of this that I'll let you plug them into uh, uh, boards, and they tell you what they are. But uh, one of these plugs is 3.3 .3 volts, and if you plug it into one of the oh. other ones, it will, oh. it will no longer run. It's a other value. thing is this other one. Other thing is this particular model, the B, has yeah. temperature problems. So oh, you yeah, often you go to the internet and you buy the little. Uh, Temperature thingies, uh, what is it, the heat sinks to put on it because if you, uh, these will burn up uh, in uh, about, you can run in about 80 degrees outside. It will, and you put it in a small box, it will uh, not survive that. So, so, uh, so that was every, and then of course, have your keyboard. Now I, now I have these regular pies in the laptop. I have a screen there. I have, I have cool uh, Raspberry Pis, but I just don't see any point for novice there. Oh, so, a lot so, of stuff you have to know. Oh and yeah, well, none of this stuff is easy. Come on, really? this is all. This is the uh, land heard. of. This is the land of hacking, and so uh, so now let's go on to the final. How you get it? So you can download this one to the computer, then the computer puts it to the. Well, you have to you have to go buy hardware to break for that. Then you have to download the program on that computer to then go get it from the, from raspberry.org. Then you have to write it to that, and then you load that into that, and then you start boot that like we did so on, the, on this. And then, and, then, and, then, and then the next statement is you'll have to then run those Linux commands. And of course, you know how to update all your software because it will be out of date by then. So you have to learn all the Linux commands and maintain all of your software. And then uh, you so might have to, and remember it doesn't have a clock in it, so it has to connect to the internet first, which means you'll have to actually set up internet connections in Linux, which is, uh, requires some uh, skill. But luckily for you, they have a boot program now that will also help you with that. So, so. Uh, it doesn't want me, you make so Five more and so, yeah, so let us move on to our last demo. Our last demo is, uh, I hope this has been interesting and useful. Oh, there's more questions. <laughs> so, so this is, actually we have one, we have the, we have the, the child of that here is the gamma, which is the baby. Oh. Yeah, that's the, the, yeah, that's the, but here so is the, here is the last demo. This is a new piece of hardware all from New York City, Lady Ada. Uh, Lady Ada is uh, has a company called Ada Fruit, and uh, she has a really cool company uh, that makes hardware. And so she uh, just started selling and sold out of this is called a Cricut. Mm -hmm. And now annoying part of Cricut is Cricut can only have 4.5 to 5.5 volts which by the way matches almost no hardware that I know of. And so I had to build a small circuit here with a voltage regulator. By the way, don't short the voltage regulator, it gets really hot when you do that. 
And so I will turn that on. Oh, and that's and I will turn this, I'll turn this I'll turn this one on. And I'll turn this one on. So now I have power to my uh, to my robot controller here. And you can hear, if you listen, you can hear it's turning the servo, because I have a program that's just an infinite loop that is turning the servo on and off. So I needed five volts, and then I needed a lipo battery off of this to power this. Now, if you want to recharge that lipo battery, you plug a USB there, not there, because this is the wrong one. You have to use that one. There's a lot of instructions from Lady Ada. Don't do that. Do that. <laughs> and then these are, yes, what is this power? Uh, this uh, this is powering the board here, which is powering this. Okay. And then this is powering the processor here, and this is called an M0. This runs at uh, a, a stunning um, eight, I don't know, eight megahertz. Uh, eight megahertz. Uh, yeah, really stunning. However, it uh, weighs uh, four point eight grams off the head. So it's it weighs as much. It weighs about five. Uh, paper clips is and is able and is it, huh? you can remove yes I could but we we have an example later that we don't have to if you could pull that okay. and that piece of yes this is one right here uh, ready for us to start oh. adding wires to oh. and so this is the, the the brains of this thing and this is an M0 chip and there's a family of chips called M0, M1, M2, M4. M0 is used for almost all these controllers, actually. So M0 is all through all this. Probably an M0 runs this. Because they're, you know, they're 8 megahertz, but they are extremely easy to talk to. Mm -hmm. And they uh, don't fry. So could you pack this way into that? No, I mean, this, this only uses feathers. Oh, so it has to be OM family. It has to this, be this, this, this is particularly used. This particular board is for feathers. Uh, there's another version of the board that is for uh, uh, giant lily pads. And then giant version of the lily pad that has uh, all sorts of cool uh, LEDs on it. So this is uh, uh, used. So you can see here we have we could run four servos on this one simultaneously, two motors, a speaker. A light show because this is where you would put in the light show the speaker and you can control it all with a patented touch by uh, reading all of it. I didn't have time to build all of that for you, but this is uh, all running here. So we'll lift it once more for our guests to see. Here is this. You can, if you listen, you can hear it uh, running. And uh, five, you know, six volts going into a regulated a regulator that cuts it down to exactly five. And then once more, the uh, reason we're wearing uh, eye protection is we had plugged in a light bulb that was probably produced in some factory uh, and may or may not explode sometime this week. Uh, not, I am I am unwilling to I'm willing unwilling to uh, put my eyesight at the uh, at the challenge of the QA of a factory, any factory, American, otherwise. Yes. Uh, so those are all the demos. I hope that was helpful. And then, uh, and so uh, I will uh, now take you to uh, the future. And we have some future. We had future hardware here, and it's right out of the right out of the uh, labs. Actually, this is from uh, Lady Ada. So this is a new Arduino. So if you look at it, it looks it has a lot of moving parts on that board uh, compared to our uh, our, uh, our old style as we know here, which had almost nothing on it. And then you look at this crazy thing, and it is full of everything. This is an M4, so uh, this one runs at 16 megahertz. That runs at 120 megahertz, and has the same footprint there. But it also will allow you to run a light show off of it. It has special hardware for that. Uh, and I forget all the other. Uh, uh, and uh, it has a whole bunch of built in stuff that I usually have to buy hardware for. So that is the future uh, one. And so that is uh, where, uh, where our dominoes are going uh, is turning into, you keep the form so that everything is familiar, but then you oomph these things to the ceiling. And you'll notice it had separate. Power plus program, so you can power it independently now. And actually, you can uh, disable this with a switch and then power it through here so you could avoid the uh, 
extra circuitry here, which is used in uh, creating a regulated power supply. So if you know your power is good enough, you don't have to uh, burn off every two volts uh, for regulation. Uh, for regulated power, you can send 5.7 volts into you get five. So it's one of the annoying things is five volts will not work if you get 5.7. Yeah. Where that 0.7 volts go? Uh, that is heated up by the regulator. And now, more future. Then we have an ecstatic free bag uh, from Kickstarter, Insanity Beyond Insanity. You can see this is also an Arduino format. This is an XLR8. I don't actually know what you want to do with this. Is this one so better than that one? Well, this one is different than that. So this one has a uh, field programmable array. Oh, FPGA? Yeah, this is an FPGA board. And so, what if this is a hybrid board, this is an Arduino with an FPGA in it. So you could uh, upload uh, a software kit to turn some of this into, let's say, a couple of those serial ports because you need an extra one. So you can actually reprogram the USB port to actually now be a serial port, or you could uh, make it play music, whatever you want the FPGA to do. Assuming you can figure out how to do FPGA, and, uh, and so, but this, so this is uh, so this is uh, this is a uh, really crazy board. What language technologies do we have to have for? So, um, for the so what are the costs? Okay, so we'll start with the base first question: What languages? Uh, C for uh, the I get to go C. C. Uh, Python for the factor, uh, and it's micro Python, so Python without uh, real numbers. But they're working on that, and that will get you there. For this one here, they have a whole separate IDE that I don't even know. This is another programming language on it, so. Then, uh, we'll work on that. and this, this one programs in Arduino C and uh, Python. It runs both simultaneously. This actually has two uh, running languages in it at the same time. I'm just using the uh, simple one. But then this uh, uses MDL for the uh, MDL. machine definition language. Uh, and uh, it would uh, to, to program the, uh, the FPGA, and that's way out of, of, of me actually. Uh, this one here uh, requires a cross assembler uh, to uh, talk to the M4 directly, uh, and so this is a this board, as you can see, has a beta stamped right across it. As this is a uh, uh, a project that they're trying to understand if any of us really want one of these, and you can see that. On the back of it, it has a cute little kitty. <laughs> and so, so like, it's telling me, yeah, saying that, yeah, this is a, uh, a, a, a love project from Lady Ada. This is not uh, necessarily a saleable product. No, no one's quite sure if this works. It hasn't had much uh, testing. It's only about, this came out in May. So, what are the pricing? <laughs> oh, pricing? Uh, yeah. Uh, Raspberry Pi is $29.95. What, what that uh, I'm working with her. Um, okay. 75 for this. Uh, 30, 30 for that for the Metro from Lady Ada. This is 75 for this. Uh, uh, the feathers, uh, feathers are uh, uh, 995. 995 for this yeah, thing. I can't remember. 995 for 1995. Yeah. Yeah. And these are uh, $19 for 30 depending on. Uh, what data that we get. SD cards, so what you get them for, that they're all, yeah, uh, almost cost more than the memory. Uh, I think this thing was uh, $9, which is a little tiny grandma. Uh, then, of course, the case for this was $29.95, and the screen was $40 <laughs> for the $29 computer plus the $30 for the keyboard. So, uh, Redbook, again, I'm not a real patient with that. So, was the <laughs> case was made? Yes. Okay. yes, it was another Kickstarter, and uh, you can see that it, it comes with it. back to the heat problem. They have supplied the appropriate uh, heat uh, for this one, so there's a, uh, uh, a heat sink on this one. It's inside of that box there, uh, so it's all, yeah, they already know that that puts in the plastic boxes. Uh, I know the Raspberry Pi different. Is that what 
for one kind of red? No, this is, uh, this is a red. This is exactly the same as that. They are. They are the same. Also, no, I know. There's a newer ones. The C's are much. The C's are much better. This is these. Yeah, but then the product. If I have a new one, can I still tell you that? The C plugs into this one. The A does not. And the zero so they're not so you buy this one, but if you buy this from Red Web Tai, you really have to buy the whole screen, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to uh, welcome to uh, um, uh, innovation space. So I've I've used up more than my time. Yeah. Thank you, Walter. Oh.